Hi there everyone, it's Jaakko here. Today I'd like to take a look at Lightroom and it's my favorite application really to deal with raw images and digital images what I took over the years and I do the cataloging and processing in this application. So it's really reasonable cost, you can get actually Photoshop and Lightroom both for $9.99, about 10 bucks per month. So it's pretty nice deal if you're in it. You have basically everything what you need for photography if you have these two applications. So yes, uh, here we are. We have these um, modules here. So in the library mode, we can kind of catalog and arrange them and put the metadata to them. And I use this quite a lot. I usually like to give ratings, and also I do this that I just when I like some image uh, I really like, I hit P, which means like pick and and when something is, isn't really that great, so I hit X to sort of reject it, so then it becomes kind of faded and it's easier to, to sort of notice the ones which are really good images. So for example, like if I don't like this, but then I like this, I just hit X and P basically. It's really nice and quick way to sort of flag these guys so that it's easier to find them later. So here we have uh, this image which uh, I kind of like, and, and this is the final version which I processed here. So I'd like to show you how I normally process the images. So let's take a look. So this is the camera original actually. So this is the the one which is straight from the camera without any editing. So uh, we can kind of select that. And before I before we get to develop module, I can actually show you one more tip that if you have a couple of images which are all kind of a series which have uh, underexposure or overexposure or something, you can select multiple images and then hit this arrow here so it, it will process several images sort of on the fly so it's a very quick way to correct several images and you can do the same thing with the clarity and vibrance and also you can set several images white balance at the same time in this meta so it's a really cool way if you need to correct several images. So let's take a look at this, this is the camera original, I'm gonna double click it and I'm gonna hit to develop module here. So normally when I start editing image, I usually just kind of crop it. So I hit R for for getting this cropping thing in here, and I just like to get like a nice composition here and kind of a little bit. Uh, I like to put the subject a little bit off center because you know, I just want to have a little bit this more a little bit dy dynamic field it. And then I normally what I start is just uh, check the white balance that. Sometimes I use the camera's original white balance setting. Sometimes I use manual white balance with the gray card, but uh, I'm gonna maybe try the auto and so the auto is a little bit more warmer. So it's like uh, we are dealing with 4,900 Kelvin with auto, and from the camera it's only for 4,600. So I'm probably gonna go auto in this case. I like to have a little bit of warmth in there, and then we have this tint which can we can actually correct if we have some tint we need to correct, but normally. We don't need to touch this. Normally, this kind of works really well by itself. So then we have a bit of under underexposure here. I'm just gonna crank this up a little bit, like maybe about this much, and we can see the histogram here to sort of see where we are at. And this is a bit too much, so I'm gonna go like maybe something like this. Looks pretty good to me. I have no no problems whatsoever here. We're just gonna check out that we don't have any any weird, weird things here and we got a little, a little bit noise here but but it's not a big deal we can actually correct that later then I'm gonna go and check the contrast and see kind of that that do we need to increase we maybe we don't maybe need to touch this I'm gonna put like maybe one plus two in here then check the highlights what what are those maybe around here but normally, again, I don't really touch this that often, so what I really like to use is use these curves in your tone curve. So here in tone curve, we can actually adjust various aspects. So what I like to do normally to the image is I like to kind of crush the blacks a little bit and have a more contrast to the black so that the image also appears more sharp and have a little bit more punch. Sometimes I do do this sort of this. So pushing up the lights will actually make this a little bit like film like and I sometimes kind of like this so um, maybe do this and and something like that so usually when I'm done adjusting the tone curve then I go here and maybe add a little bit vibrance and maybe just a little bit saturation not much but maybe like plus to really just play with little values here it's 
is the key. The key is to be subtle with these effects. And then we have also um, color. Really, uh, we can adjust saturation of several several colors. So we can adjust, for example, the reds and so on. So we, we could actually maybe add a little bit saturation to the reds here, so that we can have her lips and so on will appear more bright. But then when we add saturation to the red, sometimes some blemishes in the face might actually become more red. But yeah. And then we have detail tab in here. And this is very important, especially for the raw images. So we can actually see a preview here. And and this is where we can fine tune. And we can see that we have quite a, quite a bit noise here. Um, so we can actually reduce the noise. So what I'd like to do is I often just crank this guy up a little bit. and this color will re reduce color noise. So we can see that this with a lot of things, this really inc improved the, so if we see see how much it, it does a lot of reduction actually in the noise. So, but yes, we can actually kind of play around with this and just kind of see what, something what we like. So then we have sharpening and I always like to keep this in low value because we can always sharpen when we export the image from Lightroom. And if we overdo this, we're going to introduce noise and all kind of things in our image and it's going to be really difficult to get the quality back. So I like to use around values like 30 or so and maybe keep the radius and one or maybe 1.1 1 .1 and and detail is really good to, good to have around here. And I just usually use values something like this. So then we have this lens corrections tab here and we can do this automatically. And this is very nice because we can actually enable lens profile corrections. It will detect the lens model and the camera model what we used and it has its own profile for each of the lenses. And and this will read the data from the metadata of the raw image. So it's very nice. We don't have to do anything. It automatically usually detects that. And this can correct all kinds of things. It can correct vignetting and lens distortions, like you know uh, what lenses sometimes have. And it will do automatically most of the work for us. So if we are, if we are concerned about vignetting the AKA corner darkening effect of uh, some lenses and some aperture values, we can enable this. But uh, in this case, I kind of like how the lens actually rendered this uh, image. So I'm going to leave it as default. And then we have effects. We can do post crop vignetting. We can add vignetting in here if we want. And and then uh, those are the vignetting settings if we want. And then we have grain if we want to add grain. Sometimes uh, adding uh, this grain will actually sort of, if we have a noisy image and we use this uh, noise reduction to get rid of the nasty digital kind of a noise we can sort of add analog kind of noise back to in into it so this can be a nice way to sort of hide this this thing this artificial looking noise reduction what we did so sometimes i actually done this that that i was just uh, added this and kind of adjusted maybe less rough so it looks like a film image now a little bit more and it also adds this kind of like a nice softness to it it's really hard to kind of explain it, but uh, if you are doing prints, uh, it looks kind of really nice. So sometimes it's nice to add the grain as well. And then this dehaze, if I'm right, correct me if I'm wrong, this might be that if you are shooting something with with has a mist in the air, some kind of horizon and landscape shots with a lot of uh, haze in the air, then this might actually kind of remove it, but I might be completely wrong. So normally these are the settings I use. So we've got the decent looking image here. Hitting F will give you the full screen. So you can always preview in the full screen and even, even go and zoom in and kind of see how you're looking at the full screen. So yes, there are plenty of other options here. You can do spot removal tool, which is like a clone. It's sort of like a clone brush in Photoshop. And then we've got red eye correction and graduated filters and and so on. But uh, to be honest, I've never used these. If I have a task where I need to do this stuff, I'm just you know throwing the original to Photoshop and doing it in Photoshop. So, so I'm sort of uh, that kind of guy. But uh, I might actually do tutorial how to use these specific tools here because sometimes you may not have a Photoshop in your computer or you might need to do something in a in a rush. So yes, that uh, these options are here and they are worth to take a look if you so choose. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial how to process raw images in Lightroom. And yes, I hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching and bye bye.